G'day, welcome back to Brew Pig. This week we're getting the wings finished. So you saw us start the sliders, getting the plastic into those. That gets dusted off this week. That's gone from the list. The wings are up and working, ready to launch. State of the end, we've got a little bit of a surprise we're pretty keen to share with you guys. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. All right, Margo is still working on the ribs. She's just aligning or shaving off a little bit because of the curved wall. Now we're gonna go check on the stabilizers that Robin is doing. So uh, we've just almost finished this second pass on the roof, which is, we've got things already cut to length. We're now just basically fixing them in position and working, working down and drilling out, threading all of these holes. And th this is my last row of ones that I can access from the, from the roof. And then I'm gonna be going down onto the yeah. shady deck side. <laughs> and uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be just continuing that down there. Once we got all of these in position, so the holes are in the right places and we've made it all nice and flat, uh, we can take all the strips off. We can just basically pull countersink all the holes mm -hmm. and then we're done. So I'm feeling confident that we can actually get this done today. That's exciting. Okay, all right, yeah, and again, this is gonna be the stabilizers for the wings. <laughs> the new battery really is a big difference. Re Revelation. Go down and install the ones right there and there. At the far end of the arm attaches to those um, eye holes down there, the big chunky ones. Right there. The top end comes in through these little gaps we've got in the outer rails and then can sit down in here and it's got a big plate that gets bolted onto here and then what's going to happen is uh, Dame's going to make some sort of metal cover that patches these over because the only time you ever need these gaps is for when you're actually shipping or unshipping the struts so these are going to be patched over that's why we're finishing the plastic a little bit short of this it's so that there's room to put like a little a flange or something under on the back side of this to hold them in we're all Oh, that's a bit proud, hang on. Yeah, put more in. We just know Dame will get a sort of disgusting amount of pleasure out of walking past these if they're done really well. So Yeah. Yeah, so oh. we're just uh, making sure that every time, every time he walks past, he'll just be distracted. It'll be like icebergs, seals, <laughs> yeah, all these things. And then just, just right here. Yeah, flush. Yep. Yeah. He'll just take, and he'll, and he won't realise, but he was trying to take this photo of this ice bar, this massive iceberg carving or whatever, right. and instead he set the focus on just looking at how beautiful <laughs> just this zoom was. In on this. Yeah. Mmm, flush. <laughs> <laughs> Today I have to get these holes drilled. So this is a hole I've got to lift up from 12 mil to 20 mil, and by doing it with a battery drill and my drill here, I'm just destroying the drill. So um, I need to try and get that in a better way out to 20 mil. My solution is to get a bit of 20 mil plate, mild steel plate, and just weld it onto the wing like that. I can put the mag drill on here, line it up with this, and just punch straight through with a 20 mil annular cutter, rather than try and dig this out with multiple bigger and bigger drills with a battery drill where it gets harder and harder. I'm just gonna end up with a nice clean cut using the mag drill. Step one is grind a nice space so we can weld to it. And then with the plate, it's capable of being welded to it as well. That's been ground up. So what I want to do is actually clamp it to the back there so I can just tack it and it'll be in the same orientation as these guys here. This will be parallel with this face here. And then we can mag drill on and just punch straight through. Right, so mag drill. Yep, cool, let's give this a shot. That was a bit easier.
that'll do lovely. It's still hard to believe that they're packing 400 kgs. Yeah. But it doesn't look that heavy. No. There we go. Can it still turn? Yeah, lovely. Let's do, Let's do these. One there and one there. Always go from the front, so if the bolt falls off, it doesn't come out. Yep, yep. Smart. All right. Break now, you bastard. All right, round two. A little bit of oil. This is again our cutting gel. Oh, if I can get it to stay on the right spot. This is our cutting gel, not cutting oil. <laughs> Turn the wrong thing off. Turn the magnet off. So while I'm drilling that pulley out, Robin's over here cleaning up the pin ready to go in. This is the end of the arm that connects to the stabilizer itself. So that 32 mil hole that he's just cleaning up there, it's mild steel, so it's a wee bit rusty. Oh, there we go. You've got a 32 mil stainless pin that goes in the hole. There we go, look at that. So off camera, that goes in there without any sort of effort or anything, it just goes straight in. There you go. Yeah, lovely. So that has a grease nipple in it as well, so that is lubricated throughout its life, which is currently blocked by paint, but the point of having the grease nipple on there is when the arm and the stabilizer goes up against the boat, the grease nipple is on the inside, so you can just walk up the side deck and, and squirt some grease in there and lubricate that joint. And on the other side of the boat over here, Birk is going through and making our little plug things. So he's cleaning everything up, just grinding corners off and making sure everything looks lovely. On the side of the boat here, where those slider arms go right up and down, you can see them at the top of the boat there, they come down to the deck level. The arms click into those slots. I'll show you a close up of those. So there you can see you've got one slot here and one slot there. And the arm itself hooks into there and drops down. And then you can see an M30 bolt there and there, or stud, whichever way we go, it doesn't really matter. These things here need to be blocked off. So one there, one there, they both need to be blocked off. And that's what the little plugs that Birk's making go in there for. They stop the arm from ever coming out. And then any time you want the arm out, you just take those two plugs out, lift the arm up and sort of out over the side of the boat and drop it down and you're good to go, arms off, piece of cake. I've been sitting, waiting, wishing, pondering correct greasing. When this arm is up, it actually points vertical, it points that way there. When that's up against the side of the boat, you've got the grease nipple here to access and you can grease all of this, lovely days. Over here, this here has no grease ability right now. I want to change that, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to get these, pin, the new the new bolts that we're going to be putting in here, I'm going to get them drilled right down the center. Uh, I'm going to have it as a closed hole, it's only going to go as far as the um, the pulley itself, and then I'm going to put a grease nipple onto the end of it here. Drill and tap it so we can put a grease nipple onto the end, so that we can grease this, but we can also squeeze the grease gun down there and grease this pulley at the same time. Margot's over the back, she has been doing epoxy. So, this a collection of pieces of epoxied wood down here. These are going to be our underwater insulation condensation protection layer thing. That'll make a lot more sense when we build it. But there's a heap of preliminary work that has to be done to get these working. So she's going through and doing two coats of epoxy on everything, so there's no chance of them rusting. The painting parts tray. Robin's up the top. He is getting the last of the plastic fitted into the sliders. My job now is to get the arms connected to the wings. So I'm just going to do a slidey, slidey check. Okay. Can you pick it up to that right here? Just set it upon it. Nice. Okay. So go left and right to get it in. 
Yeah, there you go. Keep going in. That's that's working. Yeah, you're making progress, I can tell you. Yeah, it's working. Okay, wait. Good. A little bit more. Wait. Pick it up a little bit. You come in a touch. <laughs> Sorry for giving you all the weight <laughs> to hold on. Come in a touch. Yep. There it is. Oh, done. <laughs> Arm day. There we go. Shoulder. Isn't the sharp trailing edge supposed to be at the back of the boat? Oh, for fuck! Sorry, I should have seen that earlier. Okay. I was looking at it going... That's fine. Back out. Let's get a... No, we're only going backwards. <laughs> Check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, doink, doink, pointy, pointy. Yeah, pointy and back. Yeah. <sighs> right, so now up. Yeah, that's 60 kg, so you what, I was, what I was thinking is hooking a rope on going on the roof and just the both of us hoik it up. Yeah. Have you seen the way she epoxies? You should see it. It's like she's a baker and she's just <laughs> icing a cake. But is it because I lose a lot of space if I didn't try? <laughs> This is a close-up of the plugs that Bjerk's building for the sliders. These stop the arms from coming out of the sliders when they're in their operational state. They get bolted into the sliders and they act as basically a hard stop so that the arm can't come out. With those done, Bert needs to weld them together. So just, yeah, and I'll come up the top and we'll both pull it. No, wait. I'll go there. Stop it from crashing. Okay. Ready? Yep. Come all the way over. All right. Oh gosh, yeah, it's bowing the plastic, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so let's just give ourselves a bit of a lift. Um, no, those those pins have got to come out. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to get rid of the, those studs. I don't think I'm doing anything. So Carlos is on the side deck, he's getting the last of the bolts into the slider plastic and my job is to get the studs that are on the deck, uh, I've got to weld a big bar to them so we can get them loose. Currently these two studs, one there and one there, now this. <laughs> they're very tight. <laughs> so yeah, they're basically um, mild steel, high tensile mild steel studs into a stainless block, high tensile stainless block 
and um, it's rusted in there so I've just got to get them loose. I don't have any tools big enough to get them loose so what I'm going to do is get a uh, monster, no I've got a huge pipe spanner, let's give that a shot first. Bertha, I forgot all about Bertha. These are just screwed in, they're just stuck in? Yeah, basically. They're just, they're just in there, well tight. So they're an M30 high tensile stud. So this is high tensile stainless, mm -hmm. 20, 2250 grade stainless. And this is a high tensile mild steel um, stud, 30, M30 stud. And uh, we thought about using studs because it would come down and guide onto it, but it's a pain. So we're going to get rid of them and do bolts like we originally had. Mm. So, but I have to get rid of these things. I've never seen one of those used. Pipe spanner. Yeah. This one's known as Bertha. Okay. The more I pull it, the more it tightens. Just. Oh, wow. There we go. Oh, come on, you bugger. There it is. Oh, it's getting tight. That's not a great sign. Go back the other way and just loosen it. You gotta sometimes get them in and out by doing mm -hmm. that. Right. Tight again. I'm gonna get some, um, put some diesel in it to soak down into it. Diesel breaks down the rust or something? Or yeah, diesel's really good penetrant. Diesel goes down into the threads, mm. acts like a lubricant basically. But it's super small molecule, so it gets into every little nook and cranny. I see. Here we go. This is a bit of scabby old diesel. Quality of diesel is irrelevant for this exercise. So I just want to, it'll run down the threads. You can sort of see it's making a puddle around the bottom. Yeah. Eventually it'll get to the bottom. It's going to give it a hurry up. There we go, put a bucket load on. Oh, right, there we go, and it's going to fill up those threads. Yeah. So let's get that out of the way. Get it moving now. I just want to move it. Oh, and it'll it. go yeah. into the threads more. Yep. Yeah. Ow! It's so loose it bloody swung easy. Ah! Nice. <laughs> nice. Or, I mean, not nice that you got hit, but good as moving. Ah, oh, fucking hell, that really good. Yeah, here we go, that's loose. Careful. I'll let that sit for a bit. One of the jobs that I need to do is shorten up the cables that are on the winches that we've got on the roof. So originally we put four-wheel drive winches, uh, 24 volt four-wheel drive winches up there thinking that they would last because you know they're on the front of a bumper, they go through water and mud and all sorts of stuff and they lasted about maybe six months just in the atmosphere here and then they completely died and rusted and fell apart. The engine, the, the motor component on both of them died. So they were garbage. Admittedly they were cheap, so I'm not surprised. Um, what I would love to do is put hydraulic winches on it. However, that's a really big expense. It's over a thousand bucks US per hydraulic winch. Um, plus about two grand worth of piping to get the oil pressure up to the winch. We've got the pump that was donated by Daniel, so we've got an awesome pump that will do that job to feed them, but we need to then figure out how we're going to run that pump. So do we have a either a small diesel motor, an electric motor, which is probably going to be three-phase because it needs a lot of horsepower to drive this thing, about 25 horsepower, I think, from memory. It's quite powerful. And we're not going to be able to do that on single-phase. So we have to do three-phase, which means we have to run the three-phase generator to run this thing. So everything gets more and more complicated. So... Hydraulic is awesome, and I'd love to do that. It's the gold standard, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to get to that level just yet. So I have been pondering going back to electric up on the wheelhouse roof. It's about maybe 1200 bucks per winch Australian, so I don't know, $900 US, something like that. And we need two of them, but there's not a lot of other expenses. There's a bit of cabling, a couple of hundred bucks of cabling and, and fuses and breakers and stuff, but nothing really that extraordinarily expensive that would stop it. And we don't have to do any upgrades in the engine room to make that work. Anyway, that's a luxury that we have to solve later. Right now, we have two mostly dead winches that we can drive with a battery drill that I need to increase the torque on. 
when I say mostly dead, it's because we pulled the motor component off. You see the O-rings just, there's one, just dangling down. They just fall apart, they're garbage, and they got water into the motor, the motor shorted out. Yeah, so whatever. We still have a gearbox that functions, and if we connect our battery drill to this part here, this tiny little shaft, it's enough to spin this around with a 243 to one reduction. So we can easily bring the wings up and down using this method. Not ideal, but it works for right now. I'll give you a quick look through, show you the anatomy of Brewpeg's wings. It starts off with a winch at the top of the wheelhouse. Now, there's a few people that have asked why we've put the winch at the top of the wheelhouse, and that'll make more sense in a sec when I get to playing everything. Right, the distance between where the winch is and where it comes down to this pulley, the stainless pulley down here, there's a steel pulley inside a stainless set of cheeks. That, that distance there is really critical. So if we have the winch on top of the roof, like a lot of people have talked about, not only does it put it in a gutter, it means it's difficult to weather seal it, but you have no ability for the to have a nice long run up to the winch. So because we've got like a bit of maybe five feet between the winch and that pulley, it easily coils really, really beautifully. We don't have to do anything. It does it by itself. If we have a shorter distance, i.e. put the winch at the top of the roof here and then have it go straight down, we don't have that distance. And I'll show you why. On the side deck of brew peg, that cable comes down through this stainless pipe all the way down to a pulley that's located on the side deck just down here. Now, we have to have this stainless bar here with the cable on the inside to protect people. So if we're ever walking up and down the side, not only have we got a really solid grab rail here, but it also means that this cable, which is covered in grease, doesn't get all over people and things like that. So because we've got it inside this pipe, we don't get the ability for it to then start coiling up nicely on the drum of the winch. So that's why we've mounted it on the roof. It also means we can weather protect it better up there. So you can see the cable comes down the stainless pipe here and goes around this pulley and out the side of the boat. Some people have said, why don't we mount the winch here? The trouble is exactly the same problem. If we mount the winch here, not only is it hard to weather protect, but we also don't have the ability to make it coil nicely. Where it comes out of the boat, you can see it does one run down to a pulley that's on the wing just down there, and then it comes back and bolts back onto the boat. So it comes out at the, where are we? Comes out at the bottom here, goes around the pulley and comes back at the top here and bolts back up onto the boat just in here. The issue if we have the winch tucked up just in the side of the boat there is when the wing comes up nice and tight, we've got no room for it to coil properly and we end up with bird's nests and a bit of a mess on that winch. Some people have also commented, why don't we lift it from the top of the arm over here as it goes up the sliders like so, rather than lifting it from the wing where we've got it down there. I'll show you why. Watch the top of the arm in this clip. As the wing gets almost closed, the arm hardly moves vertical at all, but the wing still has about a foot to come in. That's why it doesn't work lifting on the arm. Okay, so then ease yep, that down in. Go, go, go. Ease it down into the boat. Yep, that's it. Okay, now move your hands, keep everything clear. Okay, so it's gonna clonk into the track. Clonk. Like that. Clonk. And then we can mag down. And down. That's all working as it should. Very nice. This is the arm in the down position. It goes down to the deck and then those two holes have M30 bolts get put into them and they get locked onto the deck. So that's a rigid link between the, the deck of the boat and the wing itself. There's no way the wing can move. Time to weld this together. So the process that we're using to put these together is a pair of 20 mil holes in each plug and that's welded onto a backing plate. Then to stop rust, we go around the edge with a TIG welder and join the plates together so there's no possible way that oxygen can get in between the plates and rust them out. Then we get some paint on them, add some plastic to the side that has the plug, and they're ready to be fitted into the slider. So now it's time to let them cool down and then grind it off and make it pretty. So this is an aluminium thimble, which is not ideal, but it's all I can get right at the second. 
and this is to repair the broken cable from earlier. Down the back, Bex showing Carlos how to MIG weld. Did you saw it? I did, you really can't see much. But yeah. Like you really basically have to look at that point and yeah. see, did you saw the puddle? Yeah, I did like see the, the puddle. The water puddle. You're basically trying to do like that of a mode. Little circles. And you always want to stay in the puddle. Okay. Like whatever feels better for you. You want to get a bit closer. And when, when it's doing that, mm -hmm. just grab the tip and bend the wire over the tip. Okay. Yeah, about that, huh? What are you doing? You just press it. Keep holding it down. So we're about ready to lift these wings up, but we just want to do one last little bit of crimping. That's what BX up there doing right now. Um, we are going to be adding a safety strop, like a manual strop. So essentially it's a fall arrester. So if for whatever reason that cable has any issues and breaks or does anything funny, the wing won't drop like the last time. It'll be arrested by a manual rope that we can just ease out. These wings, like we had the last time we dropped these things down unintentionally fast, when we're in the water, the water pressure moving out the way is going to actually slow that wing down quite a lot coming down. Whereas right now, where there's just the air pressure and a bit of gravity, it just falls and drops if that cable breaks. So that's why we want to put a ball arrester on this whole setup so it's a wee bit safer. What are you doing up there? Tiny little boat cat. Bit more? Yep. Yep, yep. Too much? It's good. Okay, you're in? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna ease off. Yep. Yep. Yep, we're loose there. All right, we're in. Okay, you ready to go? Yep. All right, here we go. Yep. Yep. Cool. And then we'll ratchet strap that in so that it can't fall. A couple yep. of sneak peeks for what's coming up. Our new solar, it's down. We're wiring it up as we speak so that we can have power when we hit the water and we're at anchor. This thing, it's up in the air. That can only mean one thing. And for everybody that's asked, we've got a close up coming up of all of the names on the supporter and donor list. So you can see if you can find your name on the list. Thanks so much for being a part of this. And thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it.